From beginning to end, some say alpacas are the poster animals for sustainability. Newswatch 12's Aaron Maxson covers all things alpaca in tonight's Sustainable Table. Each of these products was created from alpaca fiber, and they each have a unique identity. They belong to one of the animals behind me. The scarf, that's from Toberone, and the shawl here from Manchu, the hat and the gloves from an alpaca named Chewy, and this yarn from Christy. We have 26 alpacas here. And a lot of fiber at Rolling Hills Alpaca Farm. I spin it into yarn with this spinning wheel. Jeannie Davidian does her share of spinning, but come June, most of what's known as the first cuttings will make the short trip to a family-owned mini mill in Northern Oregon. To turn it into double skeins of yarn. From which Jeannie makes all sorts of things. Blankets, scarves, hats, mittens, purses, fly tying kits, needle felt designs, sweaters. This is actually one of our white animals and this has been dyed with Kool-Aid. Uh, there are several natural dyes that you can use uh, throughout the property. You can get a vibrant yellow color from dandelions. Walnut skins. There is also the wine produced on the property. I wanted to see if I would get a nice burgundy colored uh, yarn, but I didn't. I came out with this. The uses don't end with people products. The lowest quality fiber, or third cuttings, is used to fill pack of pet beds. So you can use everything except the hum. Hmm. Like so many nervous interview subjects, these ladies clammed up when our cameras started rolling. Hello, Ellen. Yes. Oh, yes, sweetie, yes. <laughs> Ellen and all her alpaca companions are considered sustainable animals. And it's not just because of their fleecy coats. They will eat just about anything. They'll eat um, poison oak. They eat blackberry bushes. They eat your roses. Um, they eat Christmas trees. They love Christmas trees. But mostly on this farm outside of Jacksonville, orchard grass is what's served. <laughs> that is not the first time that has happened. While the hembras, or lady alpacas, provide milk for their babies, they are not considered a milk animal. The alpacas are native to Bolivia, Chile, and Peru. Not only native, but also on the menu. In the United States, of course, we name them. This is Manchu, and well, you can't eat something that you name. Yes, big boy. He's a big boy. He gives kisses. He's a sweetie. Rolling Hills specializes in breeding. Good boys. I keep them separated for obvious reasons. With so many well-loved alpacas, there's plenty of another sustainable product, manure. I used to give it away, but nobody would come and take it. So then I put a price tag on it, and I can't hardly keep it here. Alpacas use a litter box of sorts, creating piles for easy cleanup. We can harvest that. Um, harvest that, we scoop it up, of course. And the alpaca's three stomachs ensure the product is weed-free. It is not a hot fertilizer, so you can put it directly on all your plants. You can make an alpaca tea out of it and pour that on your house plants. It's very high in phosphorus, um, potassium, and nitrogen. Literally can take a shovel full and put it on a rose bush. Another great thing about alpaca manure is that it doesn't really smell much. Just another added bonus for the very loyal customers who come and pick up twice this amount of the so-called alpaca gold once every three weeks to put it to good use in gardens and on farms. In the Rogue Valley, Aaron Maxson, Newswatch 12.